3XL here and I am bringing you the Weird Science DC Comics review of Injustice Year 4 number 3. Before I begin, if anybody out there knows a speak and spell who is looking for a date, give me a call. On to the review. To say that Year 4 of Injustice is off to a slower start than usual is a bit of an understatement. Brian Bucalato's story has been more personal and a bit depressing. It's understandable, Year 3 may have been more magical than the others, but it also hit the main players where it hurt most. Last issue showed that while some just gave up the good fight, at least one took it upon herself to turn the tide of the conflict and get some revenge. That one was Renee Montoya and her story continues for at least one more issue. Last issue ended with Renee calling out Superman after kicking the crap out of Cyborg and Damian Wayne. It was obvious that she took a super pill as she was more jacked than Sylvester Stallone in the 90s. Little did we know how jacked. I thought that it was a bad idea to call out the Man of Steel and even guessed that she would not last this whole issue. I was wrong, but not because Superman is unpissed, it just took Bucalato a bit to get around to that. This issue opens with a quick flashback that showed a distraught Renee calling Maggie Sawyer. Fans of the characters, and readers of last issue, will know what's going on here. It's the equivalent of an ex calling at midnight after a night of drinking. It's as awkward as you'd imagine until Renee drops the bomb at the end. Huntress is dead and she's going to get revenge. Very awkward turn to slightly awkward and very touching. We then take a trip to Smallville where Superman is visiting his parents. It may have been me, but seeing Ma and Pa Kent standing together while Superman looked on reminded me of the Twilight Zone episode. It's a good life. He can tell they're scared of him even as they insist they are not. It's a really sad scene, but also shows that there is no turning back for Sups. While it must kill him to see his parents afraid of him, he does nothing to change. In fact, that's when he sees the news report of Renee Montoya demanding a showdown. Without even a goodbye, he flies off. We get a little comic relief with Harley and Billy Batson, but it's nothing to write home about. Actually, it came off as a little creepy. I hope that Bucalato finds something better for Harley to do because so far, she has stunk this year. The issue ends with Superman squaring off with Renee and while that seems pretty one-sided, Renee tries to even the odds by being an awful drug abuser. If one doesn't work quick enough, take 20, am I right, Renee? I still think that Renee is in big, big trouble, not being in the game plus fighting Superman equals big, big trouble, but it looks like she is going to put up a hell of a fight. This is a setup issue and while I don't mind a good setup, this year has been nothing but. I want a bit of resolution and I want some more Batman, and ours soon. Mike S. Miller always does a fine job on Injustice, but I had problems with his Superman this issue. He just looked off in the scenes with Ma and Pa Kent to the point of looking pretty damn crazy. Of course, that may have been the desired effect, but it freaked me out a bit. In conclusion, Injustice Year 4 is off to a really slow start. Part of it is because some major players, including Batman, are nowhere to be found, but early issue setup is also to blame. I'm all for setup when it pays off, and I'm sure it will, but this book needs a spark right now. Hopefully, the action-packed cliffhanger is just what the doctor ordered. Jim gave this issue a 7 out of 10. I agree with him because he pays me to say that. See you next time.